Hey, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you a bunch of cool stuff you can do with CourseCraft's Forms feature. It's easy to use and a great way to increase engagement in your eCourse. Forms are super flexible and can be used to do lots of different things. One of the most popular is to make quizzes for your participants to fill out. So let's see how you can do that. Here I am in the lesson list for an example course I've got set up. I'm going to create a separate lesson for the quiz. I'll turn off comments on this lesson and also make sure I'm publishing it. We don't need this text box, and then we just click on this form button here. Now we add as many questions as we want. For this quiz, I want uh, multiple choice questions, so I'll enter a few of those on Fast Forward. The default is to let the participant choose only one of the multiple choice answers. But for this last one, I want them to choose all the correct answers. So I'll just toggle that here. As you can see, there's really no limit to the number of options you can provide. Okay, now we're looking at what the course participant sees. This person has marked all the lessons complete, so they're ready to take the quiz. They just fill out their answers and click Submit. The default is to only allow them to submit it once. So now it says that the form has already been submitted. I'll show you where that setting is a bit later. When they submit the form, you'll get an email, and it will also show up in your Manage section. So let's head over there now. Here I am again as the course creator, looking at the submission we just made. I can mark these answers as correct or incorrect as needed, and I can give them free form feedback on any individual question if I need to as well. At the bottom here, I can even attach a file. This is pretty handy for providing a certificate or something like that to the participants. So we submit the feedback and the participant will get an email. And the fact that there's feedback also shows up on their activity feed and right on the form on the lesson. So let's see what that looks like. They can see all the correct or incorrect markers as well as the question specific text if there is any. And they can also view the file if you uploaded one. Here's that silly certificate I made using a free tool I found online. They can also comment on the feedback right here at the bottom. You'll get an email and you can reply on the same page where you gave feedback. Next up, I'll show you one of my favorite things to do with forms, which is to gather feedback at the end of your course, a bit like an exit interview. The process of making the form is the same. Let's make a lesson called wrap up. And again, we don't want to have comments on this lesson. I'll put a note in here and then I'll add the form with a couple questions. We'll let them pick multiple of these future course topic options and then save. Oh, actually, let's let them submit this multiple times too. If they want to add something or change their answer, that's totally fine in this case. And I also forgot to publish, a very important step. Okay, save again, and we can take a look at this from the participant's perspective. They fill it out just like before, and this time it will let them submit it any number of times. They aren't prevented from changing what they wrote. Here's what the form entries list looks like. You can see it's got a little new tag here, which tells us we haven't yet gone and looked at this entry. And just like before, we can enter our feedback here. Okay, how about providing built-in worksheets for participants to use? This is often done with downloadable PDFs, but depending on your content and the kind of course you're making, it might be even easier just to let them do it right inside the course. You know the routine by now, we'll create a lesson called Worksheets. This time I'll move it up to the top of the lesson list and I'll leave comments on in case people have feedback on the worksheet itself. I'll put a few questions in here as usual. We'll turn off the single submission lock on this one too. Now the participant can just fill this out and edit it whenever they like, and you'll get notified as they change it, so you can comment or give them some encouragement. They can even just print off the page. Finally, you could use forms to do private messaging. Maybe your course deals with a more sensitive or personal topic, and so instead of having participants uh, use the public comment section, they can message you privately and then no one will see it or any discussion you have on the subject. For this one, I'll make a welcome lesson, and in that lesson, I'll tell participants they can use this form if they want to message me privately as they go through the course. One thing that doesn't really make sense in this example, but that I didn't cover earlier, 
is that you can make file upload questions as well. So just for fun, let's add one of those here. So as usual, they can fill out the form here in the lesson, and in this one, they can choose to upload a file. Here's what it looks like when you're viewing their entry. Okay, I hope you found that useful and it gave you some ideas for using forms in your own course. As always, gently tap the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos.